I'm going to jump right in. What do you do when somebody's hitting high balls to your backhands? How do you deal with them? They're uncomfortable for any type of players, but especially if you have a one-handed backhand like me, it's, yeah, it's really not fun when somebody's looping the ball to your backhand. But even a two-hander is probably not going to be too happy to have to hit high backhands all the time. And here are the three reasons why people have a hard time with high backhands. Number one, they don't adjust. So if you're not moving back or moving up to take the ball in the proper strike zone, you're either constantly above your strike zone, over your shoulder, or if you're mistiming it, if you're trying to hit it on the rise, you're hitting it outside of your strike zone. So it's really hard to control. Mistake number two is that you're making the wrong tactical decision. So even if you are backing up, most players are still hitting the back end then the exact same way as if they were way closer to the baseline. And it doesn't matter whether it's a two-hander or a backhander, if you're trying to hit the same way from back there, like you would up here, you're either missing the ball outright in the net or you're hitting the ball short, which allows your opponent to jump onto that ball and attack it. Mistake number three is if you do back up, which I do recommend for most players because it is really hard to take the ball on the rise, but we'll go over that, how to do that later. You hit the ball from back here. Maybe you made the right tactical choice, but then you're not recovering back to where you need to be. That is when you're susceptible for drop shots, for angles and all kinds of other things, but most likely we do blame the high back end on it. So what should you be doing instead? For most players on recreational level or club level, I do recommend that they move back because it's so much easier to hit a ball that has bounced, has come up to apex and then starts to slow down as opposed to moving up to the ball, trying to time that properly when the ball is at its fastest, right after the bounce. But not every backing up is the right backing up. So what you don't want to do is back pedal. Number one, it's not fast enough. And number two, you're not turned. So instead what you want to do is turn and shuffle, at least shuffle. If you need to grab more room quicker, a cross step is what you want to do because that really allows you to grab a whole lot of room really quick. And of course the turn and the setup with your racket here as you're moving allows you then to hit the ball in your optimal strike zone, which is between shoulder and hip. What tactical decision should you be making? If you're backing up, that means you are further behind the baseline. That means you are in a passive situation. You are in a passive court position. So again, if you're trying to slap winners, that's not your smartest choice. Your smartest choice when you're back here is to roll the ball high and heavy with really good net clearance cross court because you have four and a half more feet to hit into. And lastly, of course, after you hit the ball back here, you made the right decision. Don't admire it. Don't get stuck back at the back fence. Come forward to your bisector of an angle because that way you're still covering the court. Is it annoying? Is it exhausting to do that all the time? Yes, but that way you're hitting the best quality shots possible. Taking the ball on the rise is the next option. And if you're a little bit more advanced, both of those options, plus the other two that we're going to talk about in a second, are appropriate. To my mind, it's not ever one or the other. So what makes the taking the ball on the rise so difficult is that you have to combine two things. You have to see that the ball is deep, but manageable, and then you have to move up quickly. And again, to take the ball off the bounce when it's at its fastest, you got to coordinate that really well. And you still want to make sure that you have that ball in your strike zone. Because a lot of times what I'm seeing is that people are trying to short hop the ball. That is not the same as taking the ball on the rise. Of course, both balls are coming up at you, but short hopping, that's not what you want to do. Let the ball rise into your strike zone. Yep, and again, <laughs> even when you take it on the rise, or especially when you take it on the rise, you also have to make a tactical decision. For me as a right-hander, if it comes from the cross court, from the at side, I am not going to change direction unless I'm seeing my opponent somewhere in the fence on the at side. I'm probably gonna just meet the ball, try to take it early, try to take time away from my opponent and just go back cross court. 
if it does come from the deuce corner and it sits right in my strike zone here, of course, I'm very happy to pull my opponent from the deuce court to the add court. But I'm not going to try a high risk shot off a really difficult ball. Another option that you have, if you want to hit the ball with the backhand, and I really, really like that when the balls were, yes, high, but not quite as heavy, was to hit the ball with a slice because to me it was a lot more comfortable hitting that ball out in front with my slice and the added benefit for me was if it wasn't as heavy of a ball I felt like I can really achieve an angle off these balls I can really carve around the ball here and pull my opponent out wide and or even chip it a little shorter and bring them in which hopefully prevents them from rolling another ball up to my shoulder so slice is always a good option tactical decision again I would go cross court. Depending on the speed of the incoming ball, looking for your forehand is a great option. Because for many people, it's a lot easier to, yeah, still hit a higher ball, make contact a little higher, but it's easier for a lot of club players to hit the ball with their forehand. Of course, if somebody's hitting a super heavy, heavy deep ball, you may not have the time. Because of my passive court position back here, I would probably go inside out because I have more room to hit into. And of course, if I'm going inside in, meaning from my outside to my opponent's deuce court, I'm leaving my own deuce court wide open. So you wanna be careful with that inside in. And I wanna call the next one almost a specialty shot a little bit. I can't do it. A driving, swinging volley one-hander is, yeah, not the highest percentage shot. But if you see that your counter cross court higher heavier ball is pushing them off and you know that they're going to react with a higher ball sneaking in and hitting that with a swing volley most likely for a two-hander it's easier to do that with a swing volley or just use your regular classic carve off volley that is a really great option because it throws off their rhythm and it tells them that they can't just sit there and moonball you to death if you're struggling with your regular backhand, here's a great video to check out.